Hey, in today's video, I will show you a seven day roadmap of how I improved my handwriting quite substantially. So let's get going. Hey everyone, this is Chetna and you're watching Chet Chat. Okay, so grab a pen and a paper and try out some of the stuff that I'm going to show you. Let's begin right away with day one, choosing the tools. On day one, all I needed was a separate notebook for handwriting and a perfect pen. Choosing a pen is a bit like a wizard selecting their wand or a chef choosing their knife. Do not underestimate the value of the right pen and the paper for good handwriting. In my case, I keep certain things in mind like the ink shouldn't be too greasy or the writing shouldn't be too thick and it should dry immediately after writing. I prefer a 0.5 mm roller ball pen if I'm using a pen and 2B pencils if I'm using a pencil. Okay, with the width of the pen, I prefer a good grip. So maybe you can tie out, try out, you know, the slimmer pen and the thicker pen and it all depends on your grip. But I like this kind of thicker grip. Now you tell me in the comment section which is your favorite pen and why you love it so much. With the notebook, I always look for paper with a matte finish or papers with certain rough elements on it kind of instead of the shiny and glossy papers. This helps the writing to flow better. So take your time, be selective and very specific about your magical pen and paper. And drop me a comment below telling me which pen and paper you prefer using. Day 2 Flowing Hands Actually, we are good at judging our handwriting. We know how the letters should look, but our hands refuse to move that way. So today, I will give my hands a good warm up since they are not used to writing. On the first two pages, I started to draw circles, circles of different sizes to check the flow of my hands. It was awful. <laughs> Eventually, I started to improve because I used the dot technique. Through the dot technique, I made a dot first and then made a circle around it, referencing it as the center point of the circle. Now the next two pages were dedicated to drawing waves. I chose a particular wavelength. Maybe you can choose like the gap between two lines. And I started to draw multiple waves. While drawing, I made sure that every wave looked equal. Like this, I made a few more waves of different sizes like maybe tiny letter sized waves. This helped me to check and improve the consistency of my hand movement. Now on the last two pages, I made horizontal and vertical straight lines. It was tougher than I thought. So I drew a line with a ruler or maybe the margin of the paper and the lines on the paper can be your reference point and you try to go parallel to it. Basically, this is to check and improve the stability of our hand movements. That was it for the second day. Day 3 Pangram On day 3, I started with an English pangram. Do you know what a pangram is? No, it's not some kind of pancake or snack. <laughs> it's a sentence with all the letters of the language, at least once. Like, an English pangram will have all the 26 letters in a sentence. I chose two such fun sentences. The quick brown fox jumps over a lazy dog. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. I wrote them on the top of two separate pages and repeated them on the entire page. This was to analyze my handwriting and all the places where I needed to improve. Day four, the spoilers. Every person has certain alphabets which completely ruin their words and sentences. In my case, it was F, R and S. So on day four, I decided to improve my spoiler letters. Now I'm in love with this font called Comic Sans MS, available on Microsoft Word. It's kind of tidy and it has a nice cute look. So I took the reference of my spoilers from this font. I didn't copy the entire font as I have my unique font called the Chetna print. <laughs> I just took the reference to create my new spoiler letters. But if you didn't like Comic Sans font, I have two equally amazing fonts called Lobster and Pacifico. 
and if you have some other mesmerizing fonts let me know in the comment section below so on the next three pages i just wrote f r and s again and again i also tried a different way of writing g and just had some fun experimenting with the letters initially it will take some time to implement the new letters in the words so try to write slowly to create the habit i did the same and it was already looking much much better <laughs> day 5 for spacing on day 5 i started working on my spaces and implemented four tips i'm going to share them with you one by one the first tip i used was to separate each letter in the word like the comic sans font or sego print this made my letters more visible and clearer now i could see how much space each letter was consuming and as i trained my hands for consistency making waves i could easily assign equal spaces to each letter in the words between the words follow the lady finger rule as tip number 2 a space equal to a lady finger i'm sure you won't need to measure after a few days of practice tip number 3 is spaces between the lines The best way to measure the space is to avoid tangling of letters from the top line to the letters in the bottom line. And the fourth and last tip for spaces is the overall page space. No matter how beautiful you write, if it looks congested on the entire page then it kind of looks messy. So try keeping equal spaces from all the four sides of the page like how you write drawing margins. Ideally take about 1 and 1/2 cm of space on all sides make margins and that works best on notebooks. Day 6. This is when I decided to work on the geometry of my words. I realized that when the size of the small letters kept half the space between the lines it was kind of it looked nicer than any other size. Maybe a little small but not more than that. I decided to stick to this size for the small letters and double the size for the capital making it a ratio of 2 is to 1. Now the tilt of the words is where a lot of people mess it up. I prefer straight or 90 degree with no tilt. But if you prefer some other tilt make sure every word tilts in the same direction and angle. I rewrote the panagrams and implementing the geometry principles it looked completely transformed now it was time for the test day 7 the ultimate test on day 7 i challenged myself with two ultimate tests test number 1 was to write an informal letter on a plain white sheet of paper without any lines i wanted to see how well i could align my words and sentences and test number 2 was to write a japanese pangram to test how well i could flex my fingers to draw words of my choice i thought i did decently well in the first test drawing vertical and horizontal lines helped me to maintain my alignment and if you can write this japanese pangram i'm going to put it right here click a picture and tag me on instagram here's my instagram handle The second test gave me confidence in my handwriting. Making circles initially gave me the required skill to confidently flow my hands. Play with other languages as well. By the end of the 7th day, I couldn't stop writing with my new handwriting. And before leaving, I would like to remind you what Steve Jobs had said once. Learn continually. There's always one more thing to learn. So never stop the hustle to improve your handwriting. It's an art. So keep doodling whenever you see a new font, pattern or even repeating this 7 day process if you feel the need. And finally, practice makes perfect. The more you write, the better it will become. So that's all from me and if you like this video, don't forget to press that subscribe button and the bell icon right here. And see you next Friday.